G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to show you how I assess and prepare three different raised garden beds all look the same but all have very different stages of development but I'm also sowing and planting different crops. This video will be good for a range of people from beginner food gardeners right through to the advanced so stick with me and let's get into it. Righty -a. let's start with this one here. You can see it's pretty bare. There's not a lot of growth at all in this bed and that's because I've recently weeded it and I've let this bed rest for quite a while too, several months. Plus, I've even buried things in here to give it a little bit of extra fertilizer boost. One of those things was a snake and I buried it right there, about a meter or so. I didn't dispatch it, I just found it sometimes snakes get attacked here it was probably a kookaburra that had a go at it and then couldn't eat it so rather than let the thing stink up in the bush i decided to bury it into the garden bed because it'll turn into great snake fertilizer so speaking of fertilizer my assessment is because the bed's been rested and because i've buried things in here that will bump the fertilizer up in the bed not just in those spots you've got to remember when you bury organic matter into a bed it does get moved around. Worms eat it and microbes and soil moves. So it can spread throughout your bed. And the other part of my assessment is what am I gonna plant in here? Because depending on the plant, I might need to have to do other things to this bed or add additional nutrients to it. In this case, I wanna plant another crop of corn. I've got this Jolly Roger here. You can see still standing, I've been using it for two reasons. The first one is as a living trellis. Well, it's, it's dead now, but it was growing some asparagus pea and I've left those stalks there so that the asparagus pea could continue growing and we could continue harvesting and eating it. And the second reason was I wanted some of this corn to be naturally dried on the plant so that we could mill it later to make corn flour or corn meal. Unfortunately, because of the weather, it hasn't gone so great but i'm still going to salvage a fairly good crop because it's a heritage variety that means it's true to type and you can grow it over and over i'm just going to simply pluck some off spread the seed around and then we'll have a new crop hopefully before our winter starts to set in and we'll be harvesting fresh corn so let's do that i'm just going to even it out rake it over just to make sure that it is even not necessarily to till the soil because there are some lumps in here from the rain and from the scrub turkeys that have been jumping up and scratching around. They've also been eating some of my corn, by the way. Now I'm gonna put some mulch, probably half a bale of mulch, spread it around liberally and nice and thick. That'll keep the weeds down. And as well, it'll just keep the moisture in and add value to the bed as it breaks down. Probably should be wearing a mask when I'm using this because of that fine dust. But I can't be bothered. I'll just hold my breath. Well, I'm breathing through my nose. That doesn't work. Well, my nose is a bit of a filter. Okay, that's covered in mulch, a couple of inches high, and now we're going to part the mulch like Moses. We're going to make a race course around the outside and a couple in, about 30 centimetres apart, maybe just under a foot apart, and so that we'll have enough room and even spaces for the corn to grow. About, say, six to eight inches in, and I'm just going to go around and part the mulch. I love how this is so biblical. Pushing it back against the side, just exposing the soil underneath. And now I'm gonna make a little trench so we can sow those seeds in. I call this reverse sharking. Just get the hand in and just dig it along, making that little trench right up the side 
and as far as I can reach and then I'll go around the other side. The soil looks really good. Feels good too. I love this reverse sharking. Looking good. And in the middle. Now let's get our seed and conveniently I have some right here. <laughs> nice cob look at all that that's plenty plenty of seed there so all I'm gonna do is gonna screw this around and release the seed I'll just drop it here and then I'll spread that seed all nice and evenly around there we go yes lovely I'm not gonna use it all in fact some of this I'll just keep and dry or maybe keep for seeds for next season Rightio, that should be enough for now. Let's see how we go. So I'm just gonna spread the seed nice and evenly as I go. It's not gonna be perfection. This side, just in that little trench that I made, and then I can thin them out later. Now I'm gonna cover about an inch or so with some premium potting mix. This is a premium brand, but you could use your own compost, about an inch high. It's nice and light. It'll allow that stalk to come punching through pretty easily. Plus it gives just a little bit of an extra bit of nutrients as well. And now all I'm gonna do is pat down. Just firming it down so it's nice and happy. It's all tucked in, those little corns. You can use the back of the hand or the front. Now moving on to bed number two, you can see it's full of weeds, but what I want you to take particular note of is that these weeds are nice and plump. They're juicy, they're young, and the seeds haven't formed yet. I can dig all this beautiful greenery as a green manure back into this bed, add heaps of nutrients to it without jeopardizing or compromising the bed and a million new weeds come up. All right, I've got my trusty army entrenching tool here the et as we call it let's just start smashing gosh this is fun just think of someone you don't like or maybe something you don't like All right, now that we've got them knocked down, what we wanna do is dig them in, mash it up, chop them up as much as possible. I do have a better method, and that's to run it through the mulcher and spit them back into the bed. But say you don't have a big mulcher or any mulcher at all, well then, this is the old method I used to always use. Just sheer manpower. Just chopping and pushing. That's the technique. Chop, push, bury. Doesn't have to be too deep. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this around. This is called Organic Extra. Now it's not sponsored or no affiliation or anything. We won't find it at the big stores, but you will find it online and at smaller nurseries around Queensland. This is a local company made here in Queensland, all organic. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a sprinkle just to get those seedlings off to a good start. It's a pelletized form. Easy to sprinkle around. And I'm just gonna do this. Maybe five handfuls max in this size bed. Five, not much at all. But now we add the mulch. That's it, nice and thick. Perfect. Now this might look a little bit lumpy, that's okay, the mulch will settle down. What I'm gonna do in this bed is I'm going to sow some spring onions, four different types of them. I want a succession grow. What that means is I wanna grow just some to start off with, get them started 
to a certain height, perhaps four weeks head start, and then start some more of the same crop in the same bed as I go along so that you've got crops at different stages. And that way you don't have one big glut of produce at once and extended harvest all the way through the season. Since there's four, I'm gonna make four rows pretty close together along this side first. Just again, do the Moses thing, part the mulch. Now, you might find that you have extra mulch, that, so don't be afraid if it's bulking up too much to move some of that mulch over there and redistribute it as you go and as it breaks down because you're not gonna be using that side of the bed for a while yet. Another one here, about 20 centimeters apart. My four rows are made. Now, it's different to this bed over here where I just dug in and then sowed into the soil. I don't want to sow on top of this greenery. It might affect the seed growth. So to mitigate that problem, I'm just going to put down some potting mix as a base and sow into that or on top of that and then I can cover with potting mix. That way, at least the seeds have a good stable base to start and grow through. Punch it down a bit. Do the old backhander. And now let's sow the seed. I'm gonna sow some of that red toga in the first one here. Tip it out of my hand. And then I just wanna pinch it and just sprinkle that seed as I go along. That's the first one done. Put that to the side and let's start with the next one. Two more to go. Let's go the Japanese bunching. And the last one is the long white. And then these are only small seeds, so just cover lightly with some more seed raising or good potting mix. Pat it down, give it a backhander. And there we go, there's all four. We'll give this a water in later on once I finish the last bed. But essentially that's it there. There should be enough room for at least a second crop and probably a third if I just squeeze them in a bit. The last bed here is full mainly of mustard plants. I over sowed or just threw in a whole heap of old mustard seed. It was the wrong time of year, but I knew I could harvest it and use it when it was young in salads and that type of thing. But now that it's got to a medium height, it suffered a bit in the summer heat and rain and it's gone quite hard and bitter. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull all this out, harvest all these weeds as well, tidy the bed up, and then I'm gonna plant some seedlings that I got from the nursery. And then it's just a matter of pulling out all this stuff, shaking it, trying to get as much of the root soil as possible off, but it's, un it's inevitable you're gonna lose some when you pull it out. Oh boy, that's pungent, hokey crikey. If the weeds haven't gone to seed, you can throw them in the compost, if you like. I'm likely going to just throw them on the ground and when it finds up, mow over them and mulch them into the grass. But sometimes I'll throw them into the compost. Actually, I might throw the weeds right down here so that it protects my boots from all the mud that I'm generating. This, this last several weeks has been shocking here. So much rain and flooding. Certainly easier than digging it in. <laughs> just pulling it out. Now I'm not gonna till as such. I'm just gonna even the bed out a little bit just to make sure that I also rake out any small seedlings like weed seedlings and that type of thing. And just even it all out here. Okay, that'll do. And now I'm gonna give it some extra fertilizer because I've been pulling things out of this bed. And my assessment is that it will need a little bit extra because things have been growing in it for a start, sucking out nutrients, and I've pulled stuff out of the bed which is taking away extra nutrients as well. Also extra soil and minerals. So let me put some of that back in. So again, I'm gonna use Queensland Organics brand because it's a local brand and you can't get this stuff around the world. You can only get this in Australia. Have a look around and see if there are some local fertilizer companies and maybe give them a try instead of some of the bigger brands and see how you go. You might be pleasantly surprised. But anyway, this is a blood and bone style meal or 
type fertilizer. I'm gonna liberally sprinkle that around probably several big handfuls to see it sprinkled all around. Like throwing confetti at a wedding. You don't want to throw this at a wedding. You might get punched in the face by the bride. Also, I'm planting established plants in here, so I want to give them a bit of a boost. They've been sitting in their tiny little seedling tray in their small amount of soil, and they'll need a boost. They're probably already starting to suffer. Now, on top of this fertilizer, we'll, of course, we'll mulch in. All right, so I've got several types of zucchini or squash here, and I'm going to plant them into this bed. And because they're fairly big, plants once they get going i'm going to space them out nice and evenly let's plant one in each sort of corner here i think to start off with part the mulch a bit dig it down a little and plop him in and then just backfill press down backfill mulch back and there you go bob's your auntie I might just go here, it's, it's only a smaller one, this one. I can dig down with my hand, pull it back, push it in, and then backfill. And maybe one here, willy-nilly, no real logic to it, just good spacing. Now I'm planting them obviously a little bit in from the sides because of those big leaves coming out. You don't want to plant them close to the edge because then you'll start blocking off your pathways and they'll be hanging over the bed. Whack the little badge in here so I can remember what they were. And now even though it's raining heaps and I'm expecting more rain, it's good practice to still give all these plants and these seeds a good water in. This bed here, because you've got fertiliser that hasn't been watered in, well, they all have a little bit, don't they? Except for that first one. And you don't want that fertiliser sort of burning the roots. So give each seedling a good water in. And you want to water the mulch down a bit too so it doesn't blow around. And you're also settling the roots. Water these seeds in nicely, and that will start triggering those first stages of germination. And finally, this last bed of corn. Again, a good water in. Keep them moist. And keep an eye on them too. If you see anything digging them up, like bush turkeys coming around, well then cover them over. Either net the bed or put some type of frame over the top of it to stop the critters from digging them up and ruining them. So the more you check on them, and I would say daily if not twice, the better. And that's those three beds done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it three big thumbs up for three big beds done in this one video. Phew, I tell you what, the humidity is killing me out here. Well, at least it didn't rain. That's a first for a few weeks. Look, uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and also share this video around because that really does help my channel out heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Oh. Hear the sloshing? Oh, jeeps. And I've got good drainage here too. It's just been manic. <laughs>